Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Ace Attorney Investigations 2, Prosecutor's Gambit. We just ran into Von Karma. Poor Detective Bad stuck with us. Why are Detective Bad and Von Karma investigating together? They don't seem to know each other well enough for there to be bad blood between them. Well, looks like we have permission to investigate. Guess we better get to it. Indeed, I'm not sure I trust Mr. Von Karma's motives, but at least we can do that much. Hold up. I haven't been over this room yet either. You're not messing it up before I get my chance. You'll have to wait till I'm done. Ha! Huh? But I thought you were the lead detective. How come you didn't take a look at this room yet? Because I wasn't the first one they assigned. One of Von Karma's pets was on the job before me. Yep. I mean, at this point we all know the Von Karma brand. So we know. We, we know what's up here. Right up until just now, in fact. I got here not long before you did. That answers my question as to why they're working separately, I suppose. Let's say we look over the room together, Detective. It worked out well enough before. Then you won't have to worry about us messing things up. You can keep an eye on us as we go. Got a screwball attorney he has to have a detective breathing down his neck. Hm. Guess I'm stuck with you for a little while longer. Yes, you're amazing, Mr. E. You have our thanks, Detective Bad. Don't be too grateful. This is my scene. The second you get in my way, you're out of here. Of course, we understand. Now, shall we begin? Oh, here we go. Right, let's start up here. It's a cute little elf made of candy and it's sitting on a little tree stump. Huh? The whipped cream decorations around it are beginning to lose their shape. Oh, interesting. But the elf seems completely fine. Strange. Ooh. I'm s I don't remember what voice I gave her. <sighs> no, what's the matter, Miss Cone? You seem a whole lot less cheerful than you were a minute ago. Is it Mr. Von Karma? Did something happen between you two? Oh, why, yes. N nothing happened at all. <laughs> but you just said yes. <laughs> that was a hello, yes, you silly boy. Aren't you just the sweetest little sugar dumpling? Remind me, what was your name again? Oh, uh, Eddie. Eddie Lumpkin. Oh, you'll go far, dearie, I can tell. <laughs> Duh, Eddie uh, Lumpkin. Our English gentlewoman has taken a liking to you, Eddie. No small accomplishment. She's not exactly what I picture when I think of a gentlewoman, Mr. E. Never mind that now. We should ask her for a few questions while we can. Okay, tell me about during the contest. Could you tell us about what you did over the course of the contest? Oh, of course, dearie. Let's see. It all started at about 10 in the morning. That's when we set to work. And, uh, well, I spent most of the time here in my room, getting ready, everything ready, as you'd expect. Oh, and there was a lovely afternoon tea for an hour or so from, uh, around one, I think. Afternoon tea? It's an English tradition, a chance to drink tea, enjoy a snack, and make small talk. Uh, so, uh, kind of like a recess? <laughs> Good job, Eddie. I suppose you could say that. <laughs> Oh, you really know your onions, don't you, Greggy Pegleg? Such a clever boy. When did I become Greggy? And where was this afternoon tea served? Oh, in the garden, of course. There's a lovely little one just outside. They do it at the same hour every break time during the contest. Lay on a nice little spread, you know. But today, only me and Samson Silly Pants and Moody Judy were there for it. Sammy Poople had already finished his big creation, so he was there the whole time. But poor old Chilly Wings and Gusty Pants had to miss out, because they hadn't finished yet, bless them. <laughs> These nicknames are fantastic. 
You're saying everybody except Mr. Frost and Mr. Gusto was present. Oh, that's right, dearie. Tell you the truth, I hadn't finished yet either. But I wasn't about to miss out on tea and cakes served by our two TV superstars. I went right back to work when I finished, though. Toodle off while the others were still nattering away. And at any point during the contest, did you visit any of the other competitors' rooms? No, dear, don't be silly. Mmm. Mmm. That sounds like a lie. That's strange because your fingerprints were found in Mr. Tangaroa's room. Eek. Caught red handed. Wait. So you admit you were there? Oh, well, I can hardly deny it now, can I? But I didn't kill anybody, I swear. I suppose I'd tell you. Better tell you what really happened. Just promise you'll believe me, won't you, dear? Alright, uh. Tell me what really happened, I guess. What exactly were you doing in Mr. Tangora's room? Uh, well, I was, uh, suppose you'd call it, uh, research. Research. A Sammy Poople's a dab hand when it comes to the old sweet making. Everybody knows that. Uh, so when I noticed there was no one in there, I just popped in for a quick bit of research, like I say. Scone visited another contestant's room in the name of research. Okay. What kind of research leaves fingerprints? Uh, yes, that I... Uh, well, it's dance of reason I'd leave fingerprints, doesn't it? After all, it's hardly research if you don't have a little nibble now, is it? What? You ate little pieces of them? So, the traces of tampering in Mr. Tangara's room, that was all you? I... I'm ever so sorry, sweeties. I didn't mean to make a mess. I just... I had to take a little bite here and there, didn't I? I don't think that's how that works, but I don't want poor Sammy Poople getting upset, so it was just the teensiest bits and pieces. In the stand holding up the ship, you took a bite out of that too, I suppose. Oh, yes, dear, of course I did. So is she what caused that to fall? It was you. You brought the whole thing crashing down. Eek, I'm so sorry, my lovely. Truly, I am. That's an important piece of information, actually. Hold on, is that why you left the afternoon tea early? You were heading off for a second helping of sweets. I, uh, uh, look, just please believe me, I never killed anybody, I promise. Reactions are certainly suspicious, but that's about all we can say for now. Okay. The step ladder. What's the matter? Something weird about the ladder? It's not a ladder, Detective Bad. It's a stepladder. There we go. Same difference. Eh, far from it, actually. You'd know if you observed their basic natures more <laughs> closely. <laughs> I will never get sick of the stepladder gag. Amazing mystery. I'll have to remember this for future reference. Uh, I thought I saw... These must be the various tools Miss Scone used to build her castle. Buckets filled with cream, trowels, and a brush. Is she a tissier or plasterer? Don't you go making jokes. Yeah, don't you go making jokes at my expense, you cheeky young devil. I don't just slap stuff on walls like a silly old plasterer. I have to spread the cream out lovely and smooth and then work out all the rough patches. That's literally exactly what a plasterer does. Uh, I'm gonna leave them to argue. The four adorable elves and the sweetest little castle made of sweets. So that's the theme behind Miss Scone's creations, huh? Unluckily for her, things aren't quite as sweet around here as she's trying to make out. Uh -huh. I can't look at that. That's surprising. There's a blowtorch and some chemicals here. I guess it's all for cooking with. I wonder what these chemicals are. Let's take a look at the labels. Mango down 911. Homie cyanide 24 7. Wait, they're all poisons? Uh, no, sir. They're common colorings and flavorings used in candies and desserts. The first is concentrated mango, boiled down to its purest essence. Hence, mango down. Hmm. They're asking for trouble with a name like that. Now, I'm curious as to what homie, homie cyanide might be. 
He knew that like pretty quickly. Don't turn around. Don't turn around. If you turn around, you'll eat it. You can't eat the castle. Don't eat the castle. I guess he's watching his sugar intake. There's a small door on the wall here, just like Mr. Tangora's room. Here, I'll open it. <clears throat> Temperature uh, 68 degrees. Light set to green. Didn't Gusto say cream needs to be kept at 50 degrees? Temperature in here is too high. Ooh. That is odd. I wonder why. Uh, let's take a look at this. It's an incredible piece of work. Hard to believe this whole castle is made of sugar and cream. I know, right? It's like we're inside a magical medieval story or something. I didn't know you were so into such fantastical things. <laughs> so sorry, Mr. Edgeworth. I didn't mean to get so carried away there. Oh, no need to apologize. I admire your enthusiasm. I sometimes wish my own son was as animated as you. You have a son, Mr. E? I do. He's still in elementary school, and yet he'd rather read a statute book than a fairy tale. I hope but worry that his interests will make it hard for him to make friends. Don't say that. He sounds super interesting. He'll make tons of friends. Me included, I'm sure. <laughs> I'd like to think you'd be more of a big brother to him than a friend, Eddie. <laughs> big brother, huh? Guess I have some grown up to do. Better take this more seriously. Indeed. Then, with that in mind, shall we continue our investigation? I must scour the scene and inspect anything that catches my attention. Start right there. The doors of the castle have been left wide open. Yeah, was this guy born in a barn? He could have at least closed them behind him. I'd like to see you say that to Mr. Von Karma's face, Eddie. Wait, there's a bunch of stuff inside. Let's see. Hold it, kid. If anybody's gonna hit be handling evidence, it'll be me. All right, then what you got? Hmm. Cream's going all runny. The whipped cream is melting and will lose its shape at the slightest touch. Okay. It's all over the detective's shoes. Why are all these items being stored inside a candy castle? All right. Tell me what you want me to look at first. Um, wait, hold on. Is there anything before we get to that? Mm -mm. Doesn't look like it. All right, let's start here. There's a bunch of blue cloth back there. One, two, three, four rolls all together. Well, they certainly aren't made of candy. No, no idea what this stuff is for. Almost looks like somebody hid it in here. I think I've seen fabric of the same color somewhere else before. Alright, my brain is not working. I have no idea what they're referring to. <laughs> Hopefully that doesn't come back to bite me soon. Two big uh, rock crystals. Looks like somebody was using the castle for storage. Hmm, kinda expected something a little more exciting behind those doors. No, I know. Maybe they're giant uncut gemstones. Maybe this whole thing is based on a story about a castle with a priceless treasure hidden inside. I think I treat my priceless treasures with a little more care. Mm -hmm. There's something on the bottom of them. Looks like a little stand or something. For some reason, there are stands mounted on the bottom of the rock crystals we found inside the candy castle. I was right! They are gemstones! The stands must be so they can be put on display. Well, whatever they are, it seems they're not just a large set of paperweights. Okay, uh... Anything else in there I can look at? It didn't say we were done, though. I'm so confused.
All right, we've been everywhere. Let's. Now right, it seems like it goes together. For some reason, there's stands mounted to the bottom of rock crystal we found inside the candy castle. Come visit it in the name of research. The whipped cream is melting and will lose its shape at the slightest touch. Isn't suitable for whipped cream. Okay, that makes sense at least. The whipped cream in this room is collapsing because the temperature is too high. 68 degrees. My messed up shoes can vouch for that. And yet... When you open the doors to the castle, the handles themselves were just fine. Yeah, they were sturdier than expected. Sturdy? That's not the way I would describe most things made of confectionaries. I think we'd better take another look at those handles, don't you? There we go. What the? I think it's safe to say those handles aren't made of candy. Not just the handles, the whole castle, the little elves. They're all just plastic models with whipped cream smeared on top. What? So none of this is confectionery art after all? No, it's simply made to look like candy, with the cream having been added to lend it all an air of authenticity. Fake confections. Scone's confections were all fakes. What is she up to? Interesting. Uh. Can you tell me anything more about all this? Doesn't seem like it. Did I get... Oh, shoot. Can we get all this? Eh. Huh. Blunt force trauma. Actionary research. Go and visit another contestant. For some reason, there's things on the bottom of the rock crystals we found. She up to? feel like I have anything. Did I... I did investigate everywhere. I mean, I could just start throwing things together. I'm surprised I can't look at this. Uh, 
right. Wait. There we go. Why did it make it look like it was done, though? Huh, these pillars, they have hexagonal indentations. Looks like something's supposed to go in there. Well, whatever they were. And I'm gone. Hexagonal indentations, huh? I wonder. For both pillars, I wonder what they're for. Well, I have the answer to that. Okay, that helps. Gas is covered in whipped cream, so maybe a giant strawberry. Giant strawberry with a hexagonal bottom? Look, I like strawberries, okay? Can't blame the guy for wishing. Just go ahead and save that quote. <laughs> nah, I prefer bananas myself. Blueberries for me. Okay. Let's put... Yeah, the rock crystal stand with the indentation. There we go. Hopefully this opens something up. The rock crystal stands and the pillars in front of the castle feature the same hexagonal shape. I believe the crystals are meant to be placed on top of the pillars. No, oh, yeah, hexagon, hexagon. Uh, it makes perfect sense. But if that's the case, then why are they being hidden inside the castle? The rolls of blue cloth and the rock crystals inside the castle. I imagine both must belong to Miss Scone. Miss Scone, what were you using the items inside the castle for? Oh, those... Uh, sorry, Lamkin, but I'm not allowed to say. Let me guess. Von Karma. Eek! How did you know? But please don't ask me to tell you. You'll have my guts for garters. Seems the prosecution really has no intention of sharing anything with the defense. Man, thought we were onto something with those giant rock crystals, but... Uh, what's that, dearie? You're interested in my little trinkets. Your trinkets? Uh, yes, my sweet. I use them to make people all lovely. And relaxed. You use rock crystals and cloths to do that? I do, I do. It's wonderful. You should see it. They're not just any old rock crystals either. They're great big lumps of salt with lights inside them. Wow! Those things are lamps? <laughs> oh, it's not even the half of it. Those cloths hold an even more exciting secret. She's really opened up the moment we started talking about her trinkets. Since you're here, why don't I give you lovely boys a taste of my relaxation magic, hmm? Oh, Batty Bumpkin, can you get it all out and set it up for me? The name is Bad. Is that a no? Why are you being so selfish, Batty Bumpkin? <laughs> Perfect. You, have you finished taking photos of this room yet? Uh, yes, sir, we have, sir. Don't miss going here with something, will you? Uh, yes, sir. Right away, sir. <laughs> oh, you're a sweetheart, aren't you, Patty B? That's amazing, Miss Cohen. You got him to do exactly what you wanted. That's some talent. <laughs> Thank you ever so much, Batty Bumpkin, Battykins, and you, Officer Lovely. She's even giving nicknames to the forensic guys now. I guess it's her way of showing that she cares. So, what about this? Is supposed to be relaxing exactly? Oh, don't be a sourpuss, Patty B. The fun's only just beginning. Officer Lovely, you can switch it on now. Uh, yes, ma'am. What is happening? Okay. Huh. All right, we'll look into this in the next episode. Hope you're all still enjoying. As always, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.